Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day today. These days, fans of turn-based tactical games can't complain. The Bearded Ladies has given us the terrible Mutant Year Zero reskin known as Corruption 2029, Julian Gallops' woefully underestimated Phoenix Point, the colorful Fort Triumph and Dreadnoughtical, and of course the visually stunning Gears Tactics. By now, we've individually sunk hundreds of hours wrestling with cover shields, action points, and abilities. But now, it is time to return to the source. XCOM. XCOM Chimera Squad. But, uh... What is this? It is as if a muton pooped in our cornflakes. After shouting, What the f***? So loud that my neighbors on the other side of the street could hear me clearly, I had to comfort myself with a large thermos of green tea and Jaffa cakes. After a long walk, you know, to get rid of the sugar rush, it is now time to delve into the reason of what went wrong here. When we talk about XCOM, especially the reboots, no one is more known to the franchise than Jake Solomon. That's XCOM, baby. That's XCOM. No, Jake, no. This is not XCOM. Jake created the XCOM formula that dominated turn-based tactical games for years. Heck, even Mario got his own XCOM game. The XCOM formula became such a standard that Mark Noda, apparently an upcoming talent in Firaxis, decided to break this mold. Now, Mark Noda did get a lot of accolades for his work on War of the Chosen. Some might even argue that it's the best XCOM experience they've ever had. But Noda decided that the time was ripe to ditch the well-known turn-based rounds and replace it with an interleaved timeline where initiative determines who goes first. Jake Solomon, our knight in shining armor, was against this change. But head of Firaxis, Sid Meier, decided to give Noda a chance. Toasty! The result is XCOM Chimera Squad. Basically a huge slap in the face for XCOM fans. Now, the story takes place about five years after XCOM 2 in a city named City 31. Original, I know. The overlords have retreated, leaving their armies behind. These invaders are now trying to live peacefully with the humans. However, tensions rise between the aliens and pro-human activists in City 31, and it all culminates into the assassination of the mayor. Enter Chimera Squad, a group you control that is comprised of different races and classes. It is your responsibility to keep order in City 31 and find out who's behind the assassination. This immediately gives us a different vibe than what we're used to in XCOM. Instead of searching the globe for alien invaders and personalizing mankind's finest hour, you're stuck with this kind of anti-terrorist SWAT team that just wants to return order to their city. In this game, you don't take down UFOs, you don't send teams to crash sites, no, you're just here putting your squad in an APC and letting them cruise a few blocks. Now, this can still work if the gameplay was great and the story fascinating, but it's neither. The hand-drawn cutscenes are acceptable and fit the low-budget look of a side project, but the dialogue, scenario, and voice actors are just subpar. Would you say our arrival is key? Why did I ever teach you puns? Because you're very instructive. Kill me now. But the biggest problem this title has, and I touched on this subject back in my Gears Tactics video, is that there is no urgent threat, ever. There are no overlords here, no chosen, there's not even an Ukon here. All of this title's hope rests on the turn-based tactical gameplay. But it also falls short. The interleaved turns with initiative just doesn't fit XCOM's style of play. Your units aren't individual characters, they're supposed to be a team, but you don't get that feeling here. You can't take calculated risks like in XCOM 2 either. If you dash with a character in order to flank your enemy next turn, you have no way of protecting your flanker or even pinning down the flanked enemy by setting up overwatches with your other units. I mean, by the time you set up overwatch, all your enemies will have already moved. 
making Overwatch redundant. Not to mention your flanker probably has a few extra air holes by now too. You'll quickly figure out that dashing and putting your units in Overwatch just isn't worth the action points. Let me put it this way. Say you have a plan on how to deal with the current situation. You will never be able to execute that plan because your enemies are going to wiggle their way into it. And because of this, you are more inclined to make individual choices and individual plans instead of teamwork. This also gets strengthened by the fact that none of your units may die. Yeah, you heard me right. The painful experience of losing a soldier who then gets replaced by a rookie who then turns out to become the hero of your game is completely removed from this title. If one of your units die, it's just game over, which makes playing on the highest difficulty setting just pure masochism. And recruiting more soldiers becomes pointless as well if no one is allowed to die. I believe the intention behind this was to give each character their own personality and dialogue, I guess? But it's just sad. But the problems don't stop here. Oh, no, 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 no. I am just starting. I know that we are halfway through the video, but I'm just starting. The entire management system is a controlled experience. You can't do what you want to work as efficiently as possible because your soldiers need to do all the work. You don't recruit engineers or scientists. No, you assign soldiers to speed up projects or procure goods like Illyrium. Which you can't do in the beginning of the game because you have too few soldiers to begin with. And you only sporadically get new ones. Meaning your entire operation doesn't work optimally until later in the game. Which is really frustrating. There's also no sigbay. If your unit gets gravely injured and walks home with a permanent injury, no biggie, you can get rid of it in the training grounds. What? Even though this game is more inspired by turn-based tactical RPGs, you won't find a greater heal or restore to mend wounds here. You get hurt, walk it off. And the worst part is that you can buy androids, you know, mechanized soldiers, but you can't deploy them unless one of your units is downed, not dead, remember? This is not worthy of a Firaxis title. I mean, no wonder this game launched for 10 bucks on Steam. How much is it now? Wait, what? Look, 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 look I, I don't want to completely diss the game, but this entire experience just feels like this game was developed for tablets in mind. I kind of like the breaching aspect of the game, where you can surprise the enemy by rushing through the door, jumping through windows, swing from a rope, or just the good old demolishing of a wall. But this breaching happens two or three times a mission. It gets pretty old pretty quickly. And it's not very convincing either. If you shoot everything to pieces and maybe even use a grenade here and there, how can enemies in the next room still be surprised? Doesn't that strike you as odd? Oh well, in the end, the game just does what it wants to do. You complete missions, earn money, procure armor, unlock gadgets, buy stuff from the black market, and level up your units. And this is the only thing in Chimera Squad that feels distinctly XCOM. It's just sad that everything that has to do with combat is so lackluster. I never thought I'd say this, but there are other better turn-based tactical games on the market. In conclusion, this game gets a 3 out of 10, the lowest score I've ever given a game on this channel up till now. It gets a few points for having a modest price tag and giving you the ability to recruit aliens this time around, which I really hope Jake Solomon takes with him to XCOM 3. I really enjoyed my time with Axiom. He was like the Hulk of my team. Hulk. Smash. The game also has three factions that are suspected of being behind the assassination, which adds a little variety in enemies you encounter. But other than that, the story, the dialogue, the voice actors, base management, level design, bugs, the interleaved initiative-based combat system? You done fucked it up! Why the XCOM reboot formula had to change will remain a joke that Varaxas will never share with anyone, I'm afraid. Sid, I mean, Mr. Meyer, 
if there is anyone that is doing the XCOM franchise justice, it's Jake Solomon. My man. Do us all a favor and listen to Jake from now on, okay? And give him a raise while you're at it. I thank you all so much for watching, and as we're wrapping up, I would love to point you in the direction of our community Discord server. We're growing by the day and have a lot of awesome people over there. Link is in the description below. There you will also find a link to our Twitter page, where you can get notified when we go live, post our newest YouTube video, and give you guys an update on our bunnies. Lastly, you'll find a link to our Twitch page, where we stream 5 days a week and end our streams with raids on other streamers. I hope to see you all there. And I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you, when I see you. That's awesome.